<laughs> and they'd have a, they'd win. Yeah, you're right. I'm willing to put money on it right now that they'd win with that ticket. And let's make uh, Snooky the Secretary of Defense, uh, Lady Gaga Attorney General. <laughs> How about that? They'd go for that. Now, I think the only guy that had a shot at beating Obama this time around was Howard Stern. <laughs> And I'm not even joking about no. that. No. That's how bad it's gotten as far as our pop culture is. Yeah, and I'm not laughing because it's I'm not laughing because it was a By joke. I'm giving you a couple of names. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse Ventura. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? You're telling me those guys and, and Republican, right? Uh, uh, Schwarzenegger That's was right. Republican. That's you're telling me he got elected because he's some fine statesman? <laughs> Give me a break. I can barely understand what he's saying half the time. It's name recognition. That's uh... exactly. It's pop culture. That's what it's about. And especially, that's a really good example for another reason. Is because it's California, which is the most highly populated state. And to go back to that thing about the younger demographic, you know, as, as recently as 1988, California went Republican, went to Bush 41. It seems like it seems like California has been this liberal stronghold forever. But in 88, Bush 41 won. And there wasn't, going all the way back to Eisenhower, there was only one other time that a Democrat won California before 88. Mm -hmm. It was in 64 when Johnson won the sympathy Kennedy vote. Right. But from 1952 all the way to 1988, with one exception, it went red. You think it could go red again? No. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Well, you should never say never, but the most highly unlikely. No well, way. Not with not with the demographic, and the demo that demographic is just going to be getting more intense as time goes on. Now, in twenty fourteen, I think we might have a good. Uh, the Republicans will have a good shot in keeping or maybe even gaining some seats in the Senate and the House only because of the apathy of the young people, because they don't seem to care about the midterms as much. They'll sleep through the midterms mm -hmm. like they did in 2010. That's why the 2010 election was so vastly different from the 2012. The kids slept through, and when I say kids, 18 to 38, that 20-year generation, they just blew off the 2010 because their guy wasn't up there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Obama wasn't up for re-election, so they didn't care about it as much. That might happen again in 2014. But again, it might not, because not only are these younger demographic getting more connected, they're becoming much more aware of how powerful they are. So they may be getting flush with themselves, and they may come out strong in 2014 as well. But what, a, what, what happens in your opinion, to the Democrats if they run an old white guy in 2016 like Joe Biden? No, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. They have to continue with either of them. You will have more chance of winning than Biden does. Okay? There's no way they would run Biden in 2016. He's already what? He's in, he's in his, what, mid-60s? Yeah, he's in his late 60s, I believe. I think it'd be... 60, so he's going to be 70-something, but there's no way. Yeah. Which would make him the oldest president ever because reagan was 69 when he was uh, elected right there's no way there's no way they would try to get biden no they, they, they these people aren't stupid so they're going to continue with their run of what's going on put obama on um the today show put him on the view you know obama himself said hey i'm just here as eye candy and he was right and it worked yeah you gotta hand it to it but you say how do we win I don't think we can because our messages out there, they, they know what the conservative message is. They just don't want it. We, they have become an entitlement society. They think that's better. And all I got to say to that is, okay, well, make sure you build your bunker in the backyard <laughs> and start learning Chinese. Well, Joe Pollock, I think we talked a little bit about this uh, in the past. Uh, Joe Pollock of Breitbart.com, the editor. He has a 10-point plan and how he says uh, the conservatives can win in a blue state America. Give me an overview. Okay, the overview, uh, I'll, I'll do the first five points. Uh, one, do not compromise on basic principles, but to that I, I, I would say you have to lay out what the basic principles are and then we'll discuss whether we're going to compromise or not. 
Uh, take the fight to the opposition's turf. Highlight candidates and minority groups. Don't forget uh, the core white voters and create coalitions, subgroups. Uh, he points out that we ignored conservative Asians. Wait a minute. We ignored conservative Asians? Yeah. More of them, huh? <laughs> he, he's saying that there are a, a plethora of subgroups that we could have, uh, I guess, pandered to. I, 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 I don't know what his vision is. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not liking this. The more I hear it, the less I like it. Yeah, was Romney supposed to go out with a kimono on and uh, and, and, exactly. and and patronize every subgroup? Or, you know, and now he's got but a sombrero? That backfire so badly because that's like you see in so many movies and television shows when adults try to ingratiate themselves to kids and they try to talk in their slang and the kids always roll their eyes and say, oh, God, you know, nobody says that anymore. I saw that just today on a commercial for Walmart <laughs> where the mother is saying, raise the roof, and the little girl, 10 years old, says, Mom, nobody says that anymore. Like, you're such an old white guy, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's the subtext. So we, we don't want to leave everyone with doom and gloom, or maybe we do. We're going to survive. Mm. We're not just going to fall off. The, the, we're not going to just leave the country. We still have the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. the Republicans even picked up a couple of governorships. So, you know, I think it's just, um, look, the thing about Obama is he's the first black president. So great. And in, in 08, even though I didn't vote for him, I was like, okay, I'm on board. This is, it makes the country look good that we're open-minded enough just on that level. And he had no previous record. So it's like, all right, let's give the guy a chance. But the second time around now has proven that with this, this younger demographic, they're going to vote for their guy no matter what. They don't care about Benghazi and how that's the, the reason of Benghazi and what's going on there that we're just still to scratch the surface on. They just don't care. We just have to realize that fact. They don't want to hear what conservatives have to say. It's not, it's not that we're not getting the message out. Now, as I said, it's not that we haven't let anybody in the tent. Anybody can come in the tent that wants to come in the tent. But you can't go and change your principles to try to win the election. That is the worst thing to possibly Because then what? And you become the Democrat Party light. Well, you're agreeing then with Joe Pollack's first, first point. one was fine. It was that, yes. I was nodding my head when you said the first one. What, what are the basic principles, though? Uh, we seem to disagree in our in our own tent. A lot of people are, are for kicking out the religious right out of the tent. So we have to define what our basic principles are. I think the but left... We're not a monolith either. I mean, neither is the Democratic Party. Not Nobody is going to agree on everything. But the basic tenets of conservatism is responsibility for yourself to work hard. Mm -hmm. and that's what I think of. Not to look to the government for a smaller, more efficient government. Not that we don't want any government. We're not anarchists. We want a smaller, leaner, more efficient government. These are our basic principles. Yeah, we were mocked in the aftermath of Sandy because the left was saying, ah, oh, yeah, sure, you don't want your government now. But no, that's but part, that's part of national defense. There, okay? That's part of national defense. To, to, to Democrats, we're not saying we don't want any government. We no. want some. We just don't want a bloated, inefficient, wasteful government. That's all. We don't want womb to tomb. Yes. You know, and that, that has been tried so many times in history, and it has not worked. I mean, look what they're doing in France. Have you heard about this, that the doctors are in the streets protesting? Because the French government says that their socialized medicine, that they're going to reduce payments to doctors. And so what do the doctors do? I'm not going to treat anybody anymore. Forget that. Well, we never, the left never looks outward to bellwether oh. uh, because they think they're going to do it smarter, better, faster, stronger, quicker, better, <laughs> on and on and on. And they never do. Well, personally, in, in my life experience, I see uh, progressives, liberals as selfish because they don't care about the, I'm speaking generally now, of right. course, they don't care about the country. They care about themselves and what they can get for themselves. Like this whole 99% garbage. They're, to me, those people are the greedy ones. Because what do you want? Because you're in the 99% that people should come up to you and hand you a check just because you exist? 